Welcome to another session of the Sunnah Followers Hadith class. And for this class, we are studying hadiths in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave advice to the to different companions, advice to help them in handling the affairs of their personal lives, advice that would help them to become better, stronger believers better, stronger Muslims, and more stronger and better in their practice of the deen. And with that said, let's put the hadith for today up on the screen for us to see and review. And this hadith is an, of course, is also an authentic hadith. It's from the um, a Muwata hadith. And let me put it up here and make it bigger, larger, so everyone can see it. Yeah. There, I made it, learned how to make it a little larger. Okay, this hadith uh, is narrated uh, by uh, Yahya that he heard Abdullah el Qurasani say, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shake hands and rancor will disappear from amongst you. Give presents to one another and love each other and enmity will disappear. Now, this is a very powerful hadith for us to consider, especially since we're only uh, three days, uh, two days away, two to three days away from Ramadan ending. And a lot of Muslims ask, uh, what can we do uh, to keep the Ramadan spirit going all year round. Well, what you can do is to focus on your Akita, 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 your belief, 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 Tawhi, Tawhi, Tawhi. Continue to learn Islam in its truthfulness with the understanding of those companions. And that's by seeking the proper knowledge of Islam, which is Akita, Tawheed. Uh, so many of us put emphasis on the wrong things. And with this hadith, you can see the prophet is telling us, this hadith goes hand in hand with an, another hadith that he taught us. He explained to us how shaitan became so upset so angry that he could not keep Islam from spreading throughout Arabia. All the Arabic tribes converted to Islam that, and, and Saudi Arabia became the first Islamic state. Okay. Shaitan was angry and he swore to Allah. He swore an oath telling Allah that I will attack them from the front, from the behind. I will do everything in my power to cause them to hate one another. I would do everything in my power to cause them to oppress and argue and revile each other. And that's the only thing he could do because he couldn't stop Islam from spreading. But what he can do is through our personal gen, cause us to hate each other, cause us to be jealous of each other, cause us to keep chaos going, which we saw demonstrated here at Sunnah followers during the entire month of Ramadan. You know, two people, two people kept all that enmity and hatred and rancor going here at our website. For what reason? Just plain ignorance. You know, and that's what, what Shaitan swore to do because he knows the, that the nature of the human, that we are weak, we give in to our emotions, we're jealous people, jealous creatures, and all of that. So Shaitan swore to do that. And so Allah shared this with the Prophet Muhammad and told him, you know, you succeeded in conveying my message. You brought the Arab tribes to together. 
You know, the Muslim Islam will spread throughout Arabia into the Persian Empire, into the Roman Empire, and it will soon become, you will have many <clears throat> followers. He said, but understand the strength that you Muslims have right now. You will not have that strength in later years. He told the prophet, as your companions die out, Islam will become strange as it was in the beginning. And each generation will be replaced with a generation that's worse than the previous one. The Allah explained that to the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, 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 and he answered a supplication that the prophet made asking Allah to not allow our enemies to ever overcome us. Allah said, I will give you that, but your people will be destroyed by themselves. They will hate each other. They will revile each other. They will oppress each other and they will destroy each other. Your enemy will never have power over you, but the power lies in your own hands and your people will cut off their own heads. And that's happening as we speak today. So when Allah shared all this knowledge and information with the prophet, the prophet became so worried about us. He shared it with the companions. They didn't understand a lot of what he was saying because they were so strong in their iman. They couldn't perceive uh, people abandoning the Sunnah and all of that. But it, you see today it's happened. So uh, the prophet gave different suggestions to the companions of things that we could do to try to make it easier for us that can kind of slow down the process of our self-destruction. And one of the things that he shared with the companions is shaking hands. Let me give you the history on shaking hands or the thicka of shaking hands. Well, when the, um, the people from Yemen embraced Islam, they came to Medina, they sent the delegation to Medina and they embraced Islam. They were uh, before that a Christian country, but they embraced Islam. One of the things that the prophet liked was when they came to greet him, they held out their hand. And he was like, what's this for? So he put his hand out and they took it and shaked it. And this was something that the prophet liked. He said, wow, what a wonderful thing. He said, I like how when these Yemeni people come and when they greet one another, they shake hands. He said, so this is something that I would like us to adapt. Okay. So that's when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the companions, let's shake hands. When we greet each other and give salams, let's shake hands. And then he said, and guess what? This is such a great deed to do. Whenever you greet another Muslim and you shake his hand, your past sins, all your minor sins will be forgiven as a result. So that's how the prophet encouraged us. That's how our greeting, by the way, the greeting of hugging and kissing, that is not from the Sunnah. Hugging and that three hugs, that is not from, that's not our way. Our way of greeting is assalamu alaikum, hold your hand out, walaikum salam, and we shake it. There's no hugging, there's no kissing, there's no kissing the fingers and bowing, it's just shake the hands. That's what the prophet taught us to do. And he said, doing this will not only forgive you, of the minor sins that you commit, but also if we greeted one another this way, it will cause us to love each other. It will cause us to not want to be envious of each other. It will cause us to not have hatred towards each other. Subhanallah. Allah. So that's the proper way to greet. It's not to hug, it's not to kiss. That shows Allah knows best. Allah knew about cor Corona before it came out. Allah knew that he's the creator of everything good and bad. 
Allah is the creator of virus and plague. Allah knew that he would infest the world with plagues that you can catch by hugging and kissing. So that's why the Allah shared with the prophet that the greeting for the Muslims is a so that's how our greeting began. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shaking hands will not only uh, cause us to be forgiven of the minor sins that we commit, but also the shaking of the hands, you know, will instill love but amongst us. And this could be one of the reasons why there's so much hatred, so much jealousy, and so much enmity with us today because we don't get to shake hands when we meet. First of all, we have uh, uh, Corona here and Corona's not going anywhere. We know that it'll be another one, Corona 20, 21 and 22 too. But anyway, maybe that's the problem. We see each other here. Say for example, we meet here in the Zoom room and we give salams, but we're not able to shake hands with each other. It's that physical touch that we need. That could be why, you know, there's so much enmity and hatred. Maybe the, the whole power is in the touch, the human touch. You never know, you know, but it, the prophet says by shaking hands, it will cause you to love each other. If we could see each other, if I could shake Pfizer's hand, if I could shake Yasmin's hand, then maybe that would cause us to love each other instead of being jealous and envious and hateful towards each other. Okay. And then the, at the mosque, how do people greet? They don't shake hands, they hug and kiss. And hugging and kissing is not part of our culture. Our culture is the shaking of the hands. It's not hugging and kissing. So maybe that's why there's so much enmity too. We've replaced our culture with other cultures, other cultural ways of greeting. And that could be why there's so much rancor. And also in the second part of that hadith, the prophet said also give gifts giving of the gifts that can make you love someone that can make your heart soften you know you can have bad thoughts going through your mind about a person and then look at something that that person did for you that you know and that you look at something that person gave you and that can soften your heart and make that bad evil feelings go away i know it works with me sometimes sometimes when i get frustrated with this website because I'm always having to deal with the 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 Rue bitter. And there's a lot of Rue bitter amongst us who don't know anything about Islam, but think they know it all because they speak a language or whatever their issues are. You know, when they create havoc here, you know, I, I can get suspicious because I'm a human being too. I'll start looking around wondering, well, maybe it was this person, maybe it was that person. And then I can look at something and say, no, nah, not that person, you know? you know? So I know how looking at how giving presents and giving gifts can make you, you know, can instill love in your heart. You know, I can think about Sister Laylee and, and, and the nice things that Laylee has done uh, for this website, you know, in general. And that's why I could never have a hateful uh, feeling in my heart for Sister Laylee. I can think about Sister Sarah and all the hours that she spent here managing this website while I was at work. And that can erase any uh, feelings of suspicion or anything else from my heart. You know, so those are examples, you know, as to how giving gifts, giving presents, it helps to instill love amongst you. I can think about Ricks. Y'all know I'm obsessed with Ricks. Ricks is my soldier. And Ricks has done a lot of good for this website. Ricks has done a lot of good for this website. When we, the website was going through its most difficult financial time, you know, Rick's stepped in and handled things. And that keeps my heart in love of her, in respect of her, in all of her. So, you know, cause she did it for the website. She did it for the Muslims. She stepped in when brother Zaman left. Subhanallah. 
So that's how you, you know, that's what the prophet meant, giving presents and gifts to one another. You know, that takes away any bad thoughts, any thoughts of suspicion, because you would think about, wow, no, it wasn't her. Dad, she's so sweet, you know, and it just keeps you in love with that person. So this is a wonderful hadith for us to try to incorporate into our personal lives, especially since Ramadan's coming to an end. And many people may ask, what can we do to keep the good cheer going? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shake hands. And any type of rancor will disappear between you. Give presents to each other and love each other and that hatred jealousy and all that nonsense will disappear and again i say this is probably why the uma is so messed up because of the social distancing we have to do we can't meet and do that physical handshake that could be the reason why you know we can't see each other and bring each other gifts like we could, we could normally maybe that's why there's so much rancor so let's open it up for discussion and let's get uh your take on this wonderful hadith who would like to start us off inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um when I read this hadith, um, I think that um, a lot of people, especially those who live in Europe, should ponder this hadith because um, I witnessed myself and I've been doing that myself, uh, especially in, in France. Like when we greeting each other, we say, oh, assalamu alaikum. And the first thing we do is not shaking hands, but it's just giving kids. Like it can be two or four or uh, hugging. And uh, when I think about this hadith, and um, when explaining that uh, shaking hands um, will erase the minor sins, and people will be less jealous, it will be less hated, hatred among each other. It is so true because even in Paris, like uh, even even amongst their own tribe, like if you say like the Moroccan people do not get along with the Tunisian people and all of that and if you were just shaking their hands when they say assalamu alaikum instead of kissing each other they will bring them together but even right now they're always arguing among each other like there's no like even say something positive between each other no there's always some hatred they say things this person say this like this. i mean no i mean i realize myself too like um like even kissing each other sometimes you don't want to get people's sickness or the germs or whatever they are whatever so we should um i should tell my sisters more about this hadith that they should shaking hands when they say assalamu alaikum that kissing because even now they're still doing that they, they don't shake hands so yeah this is, is very yeah. important i remember when i went to texas one year to give some lectures and I'll never forget uh, when I was giving lectures to the women and I went to shake their hands and they thought I was crazy and want to know, no, we don't shake, we hug. And I remember I had to tell them, well, we need to change, you need to change that. They said, what are you talking about? I said, as Muslims, it's not our culture to hug. And I'm a germophobic person anyway. Everybody knows me knows that Layla carries Lysol and I'll spray you down in a heartbeat and myself too and even my clothes and purse, book, car, everything is sprayed down with Lysol 10 times a day. But anyway, like I, I, I remember I told the sisters, I said, sorry, I don't hug and kiss, we shake hands. That's the way the prophet taught us. And I remember they were like, no, I never heard of that before. Who are you to tell us this and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, but I told them, well, if you can't shake hands then I'm sorry, I'm not gonna hug or kiss because it's not my culture. My culture is Islam. 
And I remember they thought I was crazy. And then when I got back home about two or three weeks later, one sister out of that group called me and said, Sister Layla, I, I went and talked about it with my imam. And he said, you were 100% correct. And that's the greeting of the Muslim. And he said that you, you were correct. I said, yeah, but it's just sad, sad that you had to hear it from a man instead of you know respecting a woman can be just as intelligent and in many cases more intelligent than these men are you know but i remember those sisters thought i was crazy because they've never heard oh no we hug no no hugging here no kissing here no offense stand back germ phobic here i don't do that no i'm a germ phobic and 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 like awa said if we would if we would emphasize and practice the sunnah the sunnah is always the better you know if we would do things the way that the prophet taught us to do it then that would end all this hatred and hatred and rancor that we have but the sad reality is most muslims don't understand islam most muslims don't know what the sunnah is even if it stood in their face and most Muslims are just so caught up into their own culture and their own ideology that they won't even accept the truth when it's presented to them. But if we did this, I'm sure it would bring about more love because it's really strange. That's the first time I ever met Amina Fresno. And when me and Amina Fresno met, we shook hands. And, I, and we've been in love with each other ever since. So that's how I know it works. Some of those other sisters that didn't want to shake my hand, they abandoned. So I really believe that it maybe it's that personal touch that we have that puts that bond there. You never know. Anyone else? Let's put the hadith back up on the screen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shake hands and rancor will disappear. Give presents and gifts to each other and love each other and the enmity, the hatred will disappear. Who would like to share their take on, on this hadith with us? Uh, this hadith is uh, so powerful because when it comes to giving salams, my mom always used to say like shake hands when giving salams to your auntie or your sister. So I got so used to it that nowadays when you try, when I try to give salam and shake hands, they refuse or act like they don't see your hand. And also, like, when I see another Muslim sister, like, at a store or, like, at the mall, it makes me so happy, like, yay, there's someone like me. So I give salams, and majority of the time, unfortunately, you look at me, like, with the left eye as if they're confused, or they literally just act like they don't hear you. So these things, we see it happening on a daily basis, and we shouldn't allow shaitan to get the best of us or to make us hate each other because at the end of the day, we are buried in the same ground. Exactly. And the sad thing about it, like I've, I've been saying it's all Ramadan, but unfortunately, guys, it's the truth. I'd hate to tell you the truth, but it's not going to get better. I mean, we're not going to get any better. We're not going to all want just wake up and start shaking hands one day. We're not going to wake up and start loving each other no time soon either. And we're not going to wake up and start sending presents to everyone. It's just not going to happen. You know, we're going to become further and further and further away from the truth. And we're going to hate each other more and more until uh, until Jesus. It won't be until Jesus uh, becomes in power. And it won't be until Jesus becomes the, the ruler of the world that we will finally achieve this this ikrami this love for each other it's going to continue to get worse i mean i looked at when i went to texas what 15 16 years ago you know and it, that was a the shaking of the hands was a was a the bad thing then where there's more bad things now that many of these sisters are doing worse than that you know uh they're they not only did many of them refuse to shake their hands, but hey, I'm looking at on Facebook, a lot of them don't even wear hijab anymore. They were covering up back then about 15, 16 years ago, but many of those sisters ain't even doing that. You know, so we're further and further and further away. 
you know, the gifts. This is one wonderful way, you know, to bring love. I remember, um, you guys know, those of you who've been with me for a long time, you guys know all the different types of fit. And I've had to endure this website. It comes to the territory being a female diet. I, I can handle it, it ain't no problem. But I remember I it made me very cautious about people. And I remember one of my best friends, Um Abdul, she joined from Kuwait. And I didn't, wasn't receptive to her at first because I had just got through dealing with Christian Arabs. And I, I tell you that they're the worst ones to deal with because they want to really bring back this Arabic brotherhood based on language, you know, and not religion. And, as it, and I had just got through fighting with a bunch of them on the internet and I ended up kicking them out, banning them from my website. And then here came Um Abdul from the same I, the IP, the same uh, country. So I was very, you know, cautious of her, but she let me know, no, I'm, I am a Muslim like you. And, and she said, I'm not even a Shiite either, because there's a lot of Shiites in, in Kuwait too. She said, I am just like you. And I remember I was very harsh. I had to be, but I was very harsh. She would try to be nice to me. I was very harsh. Then she started sending me gifts in the mail. She started sending me these uh, Arabic baklava because she knows I love my Arabic baklava. Then she started sending me these Arabic cookies that's filled with dates. She said, Layla, you are an Egyptian girl. She said, Egyptian girls love dates. I said, oh, no, I don't. I remember I came on, I did a class and she said, Layla, she said, you're Misra. And Misra, look, that means Egyptian. They love dates. I said, no, you don't know anything about me. Two days later, this big box of cookies stuffed with dates came in. I said, oh my God, I haven't had none of these in a long time. And I started eating them. She kept sending gifts after gifts. She sent me a Louis Vuitton. Now that was it. Y'all know when I got that Louis Vuitton, it was a done deal. That's when I finally uh, asked her for a phone number and I called her. She drove all the way from Canada to come visit me. And I was so happy to see her and when she stayed with me twice, you know. But I remember she killed me with that kindness and those gifts. And she said, remember how I said, girl, I was, she said, I understood. She said, you were fighting a bunch of Christian Arabs and you were fighting against a bunch of hypocrites on the internet. She said, so you have to be cautious because you're a female Daya and kind of find out she's a Daya just like me too, you know, and uh, me and her became the best of friends. But I remember she kept sending me the things that I couldn't get, those dates, that baklava and all of that. And she just, that Louis, and that Louis Vuitton came in the mail. That was a done deal. That's my favorite bags. And I still got that Louis Vuitton. I carry it with such pride knowing that it came from her. So again, that's just an example as to how, you know, you can get people to love you you know, through presence. And to this day, even though she's moved back to Kuwait, I don't get to speak to her that much. I message her on WhatsApp every now and then, but eat, we're still bonded. That bond is there. That bond is there. That love is still there between me and her. Good job. Okay, go ahead, Sister um, Sister Yasmin. Let me put the Hadith back up here again. And it's about how shaking hands will cause rancor to disappear and giving presents and gifts to one another will cause you to love and, and the hatred to disappear from one another. Go ahead, Sister Yasmin. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, this hadith is a really great reminder because unfortunately there's a lot of Muslims who want nothing but the worst for one another. So they they do all that they can to bring each other down, whether it's physically, emotionally, or verbally. And it's really sad to see because as Muslims, we are supposed to be great example for the others. Like... Um, like the prophet, peace be upon him, said, we are supposed to be like bricks of a building, strengthening one another, supporting, lifting each other up and encouraging one another. We shouldn't, um, we shouldn't be busy finding faults in one another. And I think giving gifts to one another or even shaking hands is a good way to keep yourself from, to keep yourself from any hatred towards, uh, 
a, a Muslim person who you know is a righteous, good believer because it makes you feel good inside and instills love for one another. And it's all about loving and hating for the sake of Allah. Exactly. And it is so hard. It is so hard to hate someone when it, that when every time you think about them, it just that person makes your heart feel warm. You know, it's like good always prevails over evil. You know, the good always prevails. It's hard to keep bad thoughts about a person who has done nothing but good for you unless you are an evil, sick person yourself. And let me correct it. There are a lot of evil, sick women out there like that. You can be nice to them and they still just, they'll forget everything that you ever did for them and just hate you because of whatever, because women are like that. But for a person that really believes in the law and fears him, a person that really wants paradise, a person that truly understands that our allegiance is to be to each other. For a person that truly understands la yala, ha yala, la, Muhammad Rasulullah, and I ain't talking about the Ruwaybidas because they don't understand what la yala, ha yala, la, Muhammad Rasulullah means. But for those of us who do, it's hard to harbor in your heart any hatred towards somebody that if you can think about a simple thing they did for you and it'll just make your heart warm. Supana Allah, you know, good job, Sister Yasmin. Brother Tarek, go ahead, give us your take. We finally get a man here on the microphone. Uh, what's your take on this wonderful hadith, Brother Tarek? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Rahmatullah. Good to hear your voice. <laughs> well, this hadith, it was a good reminder to me about how we should be loving each other for the sake of Allah. Too many of us, we just, not enough people give that charity of kindness to each other. And me personally, I, I live in a very small community of Muslims, but I've seen both sides of where people have let their personal feelings and little petty things come between them. And it just, it brings on so much hate and anger between you people. And when you're in the masjid together, I mean, you feel, you can feel it. it it's sad. But I've also experienced the complete opposite, you know, giving gifts and spreading that kindness when you shake each other's hands, greet each other. I mean, it just, it builds, it builds a brotherhood. Uh, it builds that strong bond and that love, it's, it helps us keep going and stay strong. Alhamdulillah. Yes, you, you can see both sides of it, guys. You know, like he said, you can go into the masjid and feel the tension so tight you can just cut it in the air, you know, on one hand with those who hold petty personal grudges. Now, those are the people that Shaitan, uh, he succeeds, he sends his Ifrit out to succeed in destroying relationships like that. And unfortunately, that's happened throughout history. You know, for those of you who don't know, Imam Muslim was a student of Imam Bukhari, and, uh, but they ended up uh, hating each other. You know, Shaitan came between them and caused so much hatred and rivalry and that they didn't speak to each other until death or whatever. And that shows how Shaitan will send out those Ifrits like he promised to do to destroy the brotherhood, to make us hate each other over petty, trivial things. But then on the other side, like Brother Tarek, see, when you do see the people who resist that, who don't fall in that, you see what a beautiful thing it is to experience true brotherhood, true sisterhood, true love for the sake of Allah. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing, you know? And I remember I experienced it, you know, when I was having one of my surgeries, my uh, bariatric surgery, I'll never forget, you know, when they couldn't wake me up, they were trying to wake me up and my doctors, all my doctors are Muslim. I'll never forget, I could hear Dr. Siddiqui, wake up, Layla, wake up, wake up, you have to wake up. Then I could hear Dr. Hussein, Layla, Layla, you have dawah to do. Your website needs you. It's not time to go yet because they had given me too much anesthesia. And, I, you know, anesthesia is a dangerous thing if they give you too much. But I was so obese back then. They didn't know how much to give me. And they overdid. They could not wake me up. And I can remember trying to get up and I could hear my doctors, Layla, Layla, the, the Uma needs you. And I'm 
I'm fighting, like, wake me up, please, Allah, wake me up. And they listen to me. I kept hearing Sadiqi, listen to me, listen to my voice, fight, 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 fight. And I hear Dr. Hussein, fight, Habibati, fight, Habibati, fight. And so finally I woke up, oh, you know, like a, like I just taken my breath from out from drowning. I'll never forget. It was the scariest thing of my life. But when I woke up, the tears, the tears that was in Dr. Siddiqui's eyes, the tears in Dr. Hussein's eyes, the tears in my mother's eyes, they were so, they really loved me. They were really, oh, you came through. They were so happy. You know, I'll never forget that that was love. And I remember all the nurses and them were standing back looking in shock. And I remember Dr. Siddiqui, he was a surgeon. He said, she's one of mine. He said, we're brothers and sisters in Islam. You know, he said, and to have lost her, he said, that would have been hard. You know, and I'll never forget, but that's when I truly felt that, that love, that, that love. And this was just the doctors, two doctors and a patient. We weren't close other than look at me to cut me open and take me out, you know. But Supana Allah, when you do experience that true brotherhood, it's a great thing, guys. It's something that can't be duplicated. And I never experienced it like that before, after that, since then. Supana Allah. Yeah, anyone else? Again, the Hadith, the Prophet encouraged us. And remember, guys, you know, Allah told him what would happen to this nation, how we would meet our destruction. You know, he told us what would happen to his companions. He, uh, Allah told him what would happen to the later generations. That's why we have all these hadiths addressing that. So the prophet, before he left this earth, he gave us tools that we could use to help slow the process down. You know, we will oppress each other. We will destroy each other because it's already written. Whatever Allah has written, you know, that's it's going to happen. Nothing we can do to change the cotter of a law. But as the prophet taught the companions, we can slow it down by simply taking his advice, doing things the way he taught us to do them. Instead of doing all that hugging and kissing, when you come upon another Muslim, shake that person's hand as long as the person is the same sex as you. Because remember, we don't shake hands with non-Mahrams. And then when you are the, the women in your community, the men in your community, send presents to them, send gifts to them on a regular basis, because that will help to take away a lot of that enmity and hatred in your community. And also another thing that I encourage you women to do, and the prophet did too, women need to give in charity. Every female on this planet who is Muslim needs to have a charity box in her home. And every time she wants to get jealous of another female, go put a dollar bill in that charity box. Every time she uses profanity, put a dollar bill in that charity box. Every time you hate another sister or, or say something bad or even think something bad about another woman, put a dollar bill in that charity box because that will help to purify you of your evil nature and your evil emotions too, since women are weaker than men when it comes to controlling them. Okay, so I think this wraps up this wonderful hadith. Let me put it on the screen for one final time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shake hands and rancor will disappear. Give gifts to one another and love each other and all that enmity and hatred will disappear. Again, we cannot stop what Allah has already decreed, but we can slow it down, okay? If we simply follow those steps as given to us, by the prophet. Fresno, you want something to say? Oh, well, like yeah, uh, I experienced this because uh, the masjid that it was, I don't know, just, you know, Arab, just speaking Arabic, you don't know their language and they be looking at you all stupid and stuff. And I'm not the one that you can just look at stupid. So something just said, uh, Reach your hand out there, Mina, to shake the sister's hand. I reached my hand out there, and that sister just shook my hand. And just like what that thing said, the feeling 
was, oh, okay, they all right. You know, they they not speaking my language, so they really don't know. But if you stick your hand out there, they sure will shake your hand. Exactly. I I found that out to be. That's what I'm saying. I think it's that physical touch, because even here, we've experienced it here on the Zoom room. Look how we got close in the past two months. We were so excited to finally see each other in real life. But then we had a couple of women here that wasn't enough for them. They're still on their little escapade on social media. But I think if maybe we had shook hands, I think it's the personal connection. Maybe if we had met that connection by shaking hands, that it's like it will bond and seal that love between us, you know? So, so I think it has to do with the physical touch. So I'm like, I might agree with you on that because you always hear about a warm handshake or a firm handshake and how that brings that bond closer together. When you're hugging and that kind of thing, is I always look at hugging as a more of an intimate act. Right. You know, and not really something you want to share with just any and everybody, you know, because sometimes you hug, you know, you just barely touch them, barely anything right. like that. So, yeah, so this is the first time I heard this, Hadith, also, you know, about the handshaking. You yeah. Know, yeah, because, you know, when I first became Muslim, we were doing the embracing. Right, know? right. Yeah, and that's why I saying as a communication specialist, I do know how important physical touch is, especially mm-hmm. working in the field that I worked in. The touch is so important when you're dealing with autistic uh, uh, people and stuff, too. So I think, see, Allah knows what's best. And I and the prophet knew what was best for us, you know, and like I said, I really I like this Zoom. I just wish they could make it where I could just put my hand through here and say, hey, fam, hey, what's up, chicky? Once we make that physical connection, hey, that's it. You can't come between us now. Subhanallah. OK, go ahead, Sister Malion. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Rock my tutor about a cartoon. Can I see the hadith again? Yes. Um, I was going to say, yeah, shaking hands is like very important. I think that's like one of the things that I noticed just being like a school girl. Um, hold up. Wait a minute. I got to do something. Okay. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Um, just being a school girl, one of the things that I noticed like throughout my three years in high school is like, number one like not a lot of muslims like spread the greeting they don't really say it publicly it's sort of like an embarrassment that's one thing that i noticed it was just hard for me to go around greeting the muslims i always wanted to greet them and you know happy to meet new people because i was you know one of the few people there so it's always exciting for me to see different muslims especially people who are um refugees and don't really speak that much of english and i'm more familiar with the territory And I think the hardest part for me was just like giving the greetings, but I always told myself, I'll just like take it slow on people, you know, give the greetings first and then later on get into the handshake and stuff. And, you know, handshaking was hard for them too. So I would just, you know, greet them and then slowly but surely greet, you know, shake their hands. And it was, it just felt different. It, you could see that there was like love there. Um, you can genuinely like see that we, you know, loved each other and we were just more supportive of each other than, and also just being on this Zoom room, I feel like the Zoom room itself is a gift for me because I meet a lot of, you know, amazing people that I never would have thought that I would, you know, get to meet because I don't really have, I'm not around that many people because of COVID, everything's like slowed down. We don't really get that human interaction, but I think the Zoom room is like close to it. And uh, can you guys hear that background noise? It's not that loud. Just keep, yeah, keep going. I don't know what, they're so loud. But um, it's, to me, it's a gift because I get to meet new people and like meeting people like Sister Awa and just like the, you know, the young girls here and just greeting each other and just cheering each other on. I see that as a gift. And I think that's like, to me, that's like a, it's not a tangible gift. Like it's, you can't feel it, but it's still like a present, something that the prophet refer, would refer to as a present. And I do feel like I have more love for people on here. I've probably, I haven't met majority of the people, you know, on the website in real life, but I've seen them on video. And I think 
you know, I I genuinely like love them more for the sake of the law, like just getting to know them. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the thing I like too. Like I said, we, that we're around each other. That's one of the reasons why I did make this Zoom room. And by the way, the Zoom room is 24 hours every day, not just Ramadan. <laughs> so haters can hate, 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 as Taylor Swift says. But anyway, yeah, the Zoom room is open 24 hours and it'll stay here. And this is why I like it because it does allow us to get more personable and share and become more of an Uma because that's always been the goal of behind uh, Suna followers, the creation of this website. When we created it, we wanted to make it an online Islamic community. That's why I used to have website imams. Y'all remember that? I used to always have website. Uh, that was always my intention back in 1988 was to make it an online Islamic community. I did that before Zoom was even for, invented. You know, I wanted to have a virtual Islamic community. Well, now, alhamdulillah, we can do that. You know, we can see each other, talk to each other. We just can't touch. We're not tangible, but I'm hoping that, that this would bring us closer as a nation. You know, we can help each other, interact with each other, share with each other, have fun with each other, cry with each other, and all of that, which is what we have been doing here. You know, but, you know, alhamdulillah, this is a good step. But like I say, when you do go out in person and you are around other Muslims, replace it bring back the Sunnah with that handshake. When they come to you to try to do that hug and kiss, stop them politely and say, huh, salam alaikum, sister. Just reach your hand out and take it and shake it. Okay, Sister Lucy, go ahead. I was, I was listening to her. She's absolutely right because when I first started, when I converted and you meet a Muslim, you're so excited. You greet them with the right greeting but they look at you like you crazy. When I first started, I had on my hijab, but I didn't have the rest of my cover on. And I went by two Muslim ladies and I said, Asalaamu Alaikum. They looked at me like I was foolish. And they walked on past me and I guess they thought I didn't hear them. They go like, where's her cover? Okay, if you knew I needed a cover and I didn't know, then advise me, give me, if you are older than me and you've been, in, been a Muslim longer than I, advise me on what I should do. Don't talk about it, but advise me. And this is before the corona. And like she said, you can greet them and they walk away or they'll tuck their head away like they embarrass other greeting. And I've learned here that the greeting is something that you get re rewarded for. Exactly. When, when you walk by them, they just look at you like you're the enemy of the state. But the, but that's on them. The reward, it came on you. Just like the other day, I was out with my daughter, when I, my granddaughter, when I went to uh, get those boxes that I paid all that money for. Don't ever go to Home Depot for no boxes. $59 for 10 boxes. When I bought 10 boxes from Walmart, for only 20 bucks. But anyway, uh, when I bought those boxes, there was a Muslim lady in the store with her husband. When we walked past him, I said, assalamu alaikum. So good to see you. Happy Ramadan. They looked at me like, and they looked around like, did anybody hear? I said, well, I got the <laughs> reward, inshallah. Another good deed for me. And now my granddaughter say, ditto. And we walked away. I said, girl, sh she went, ditto. You know, my granddaughter's a mini, mini Layla. You know, won't, didn't have no hijab on, but she went, ditto. But anyway, like I said, you know, you know, you get the reward, you know, you get the reward and, you know, at least you did your job and maybe you taught them something, you know, if they don't want to respond to the greeting, that's on them. And that's why the prophet said you get a double reward, you know, because you initiated it and, and you gave it. That's a double reward. That's 1400 blessings, inshallah, that I got yesterday from just saying, assalamu alaikum. And they, yeah. And my granddaughter got it for saying, ditto. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, anyone else would like to share their intake on this idea? Well, alaikum salam. Go ahead, Sister Sabrine. Uh, this is so wonderful. Every time I come here, I, I, I'm so blessed because I keep learning more and more and more. And I, I, this is the first time that I've heard someone say, shake their hand instead of, you know, hugging them. 
and, and there have been times with, I remember once I was in the masjid and a sister came up to me to hug me and I said, I love you, sister, you know, but, you know, I, you know, and she was so angry with me. She was, so, and this is someone I knew, you know, she was angry. She didn't want, you know, but I'm, I'm, I, this is the first time I'm really learning. I had a friend, I have a friend that and every time she would come down and we would go to a masjid, no matter where this masjid was, after, after the prayer was over, she would walk to each Muslim sister and she would shake their hand, each one, even That's though she'd one. never seen them before. And she see? would shake their hand. Cause all her minor thinking. sins were being forgiven. Yep, and that bond, that bond. I mean, the Fresno, you remember when we went to Texas? And those sisters attacked me because I said that we're supposed to shake hands. And you remember even girlfriend wouldn't, didn't shake my hand. The only person that shook hands was you and me. And look, me and you still together. <laughs> the rest of them ain't here no more. But you, me and you still bonded, still together. And we were the ones and we met. And first, we didn't do no hug and kiss. Me and you went, you said, oh, look at her. There she go. And we shook hands. Hey, what's up, friends? No, who Gary here? Yeah. And the rest of them didn't shake hands. They hugged me, but didn't shake hands. And look, none of them are with me today, but me and you still here. It's that physical contact. It's something about that physical contact. Yeah, but that's, I want everyone, a lot of people didn't know this how deep, but I want you guys to remember it. You know, not only does it instill love between us, but you're forgiven of your minor sins. Your minor, any sins that you committed that you did not know were sinful actions, they are wiped away when you grab another Muslim's hand and shake it and give salams. So that's why that woman went to everybody she didn't know and shook their hand, Sabrine. She wanted to put that physical touch there so that person would, that, would be, that would be loved and no enmity between her and none of the other sisters, plus forgiveness of her minor sins. You know, So that's why she did it. That's but right. I, I really think it's the physical bond. Because look, we're all supposed to be bricks in a building. When we shake hands, what do we do? We are confirming that we are a brick. It's that bond. Me and I mean, the Fresno's bond is still there. But all the mother sisters did not shake my hand and they all left. Every single one. And they were regular people here. It's that bond. All right, any other questions or comments about this wonderful hadith? If not, let me put it back up on the screen. And I want everyone to teach your kids this too. Teach the children that our culture is Islam. That's our culture. Our culture is not African-American culture. Our culture is not Arabic culture. Our culture is not Pakistani culture. Our culture is Islam, that's our way of life and our culture. And in our culture, we give the greeting of assalam wa alaikum and shake hands wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Teach that to your children. That hugging and kissing, it's all about social distancing right now anyway. It shouldn't have been that anyway. That's so, don't let, teach your daughters and your boys too nowadays, don't let nobody get close up on you to hug you anyway, because that is supposed to be something intimate. And we're living in the days of the gay blades. So we have to be careful because you never know what's, what lies underneath that hijab. Hello, could be a shotgun or it could be a gunshot. You never know. So you teach your kids to shake hands and not hug and kiss people anyway, because that's something that they share only with people close to them, such as their mom, dad, and that's it. Okay. All right. And again, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us this. He said, shake hands and rancor will disappear. Give presents to each other and love each other and hatred and enmity will disappear. On that note, we're going to close out for today. I want to thank everybody for participating in another one of our Hadith classes. Uh, please make sure you guys uh, uh, follow the schedule. I will post the schedule up on uh, Facebook and the group page and on my profile as soon as I get this video for this class made. So make sure you look for it. Um, 
uh, I'm going to change the time tomorrow for the um, uh, signs of the last hour because I have an appointment at one o'clock. So I'm going to change the signs of the last hour to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I don't want to cancel that class, but I also have an appointment to get to at one. Okay, so we'll stop right here. Supana kala humawa bihamdika, a shadow on laila haila anta, stakfiruka wa tubu ilake.